the sermon this morning, Obedience School. And as you can gather, it's taken from that last verse, verse 17 of Luke 1. He will, this, this, the one coming in the spirit of Elijah will turn the disobedient to the wisdom of the just or to the righteous. But let's back up because that is a quotation from Malachi, Malachi 4. And it's interesting, you know, when you think about Malachi 4, you know, I, well, let me take a little rabbit trail for a second. One of the things they tell you, you, you may or may not know that back when I was a man, before I became a chaplain, <laughs> I used to be infantry in the army, and I used to jump out of airplanes, perfectly good airplanes. I say that for the maintainers in our room, uh, although the paratroopers say there is no such thing as a perfectly good airplane if it's in the military. But one of the superstitions amongst paratroopers is you should never make your last jump. If you know it's going to be the last time you jump while you're in the military, you're going to be self-conscious and you're likely to do something crazy upon landing to tense up and you'll break your leg or something like that. So, you know, you, you, you hope that you never know that the jump you just did will turn out to be your last one. As far as I know, I have made my last military jump, but I didn't, I didn't know when I made that jump. But I tell you that to say, I think about the book of Malachi. The Old Testament is full of instructions and prophecies of things that God's going to do, but did Malachi know that with his book, the Old Testament would be closed and there'd be no more tweets from God until the New Testament? I think, wow, that would have, that would have made me write a little differently, I think. That's probably why if there was somebody else writing for God after Malachi, it didn't make it into the Bible. And I hope you know, there's many books that were written that didn't make it into the Bible. They're quoted in the book of First and Second Kings. There's a bunch of books that didn't make it. The Holy Ghost said, nope, not 100% God. But anyhow, let's get back to Malachi. Malachi doesn't know it, but this is going to be the last word from God until this one that he prophesied comes. This one coming in the spirit of Elijah to conduct obedience school. And some of you, if you've ever gone to a Jewish Passover, you know that they always have an Elijah chair at a Jewish Passover, and they drink the Elijah cup, one of their cups of wine in the course of Passover, is because they're still waiting for the fulfillment of this verse from the book of Malachi, the one coming in the spirit of Elijah. As Christians, we have the advantage of knowing already came. Like Jesus had to explain it. The disciples said, they, they questioned him, we thought Elijah had to come before you came. And Jesus said, he did come. It was John the Baptist. Didn't work out so well for John the Baptist, he says. <laughs> people didn't recognize him. Imagine God's people not recognizing God moving in their midst. Of course, that's what the first chapter of the book of John tells us, doesn't it? It says, he came to his own and they didn't recognize him. That gives me some trepidation. And I say, Lord, I'm grateful now that I live in the church age. I'm so glad I didn't live back in the days of John and of Jesus because I might have missed the boat. That's a scary thought, right? Well, not if you go back and you look more into what this prophecy, not only of Malachi, but as it is repeated in Luke. As I studied it this week, I thought, well, it should resonate with us. Parents and children with broken relationships Kids who think their parents don't know anything. Parents who think their kids don't know anything. Sound familiar, church? Okay, I won't make you speak because you're Methodist. 
won't make you get out your whoop towel. To think, oh, God, you saw this day coming when something that should be so natural is quite unnatural. I must admit, I almost threw my, uh, my shoe through my computer screen last night because of the ads for, can't even remember the company, but it was something where the dad kept looking stupid and mom having to keep correcting the dad. And that, that's a personal, gets to me, let's just put it that way. But then also, it's all, uh, in Madison Avenue, it's always the kids who are smarter than the parents too, right? So this is the spirit that God says, I am going to fix by sending the one in the spirit of Elijah, the one who's going to conduct obedience school. I looked at that word and the disobedient to the wisdom of the righteous or to the just or basically to those that God sees as obedient, you could say. I thought that word was particularly good. It, Sometimes in English, we don't have as solid a word, so disobedient works. But it really was, and it resonated with me, it said, it's the unteachable to the wisdom of the righteous. And that seemed more to make sense, to say, oh, wisdom and unteachability, the two are going to be reconciled in this one coming in the spirit of Elijah. Oh, I guess I need to back up a week. I didn't make it clear last week in one of my three sermons <laughs> that this birth of the, the woman who was barren was gonna give birth to John the Baptist because of course last week that didn't go into the verse, we didn't go that far, but that's what this is. This is a continuation of this birth announcement for John the Baptist. Imagine that being told that your baby's gonna have the Holy Ghost before he's even born. Some of us wonder if we even got the Holy Ghost now that we're in church. This baby's gonna have it before he's born because God is going to turn back on the telephone that got closed with Malachi, and now the phone is on and God is speaking again. This baby has to be born and go forward, and this baby's gonna have a remarkable ministry. He's going to be able to take the disobedient and help them to comply with, as it said in Malachi 4, all of the commandments given at Mount Horeb. That's quite a lot for a baby to do, or even for a young man when he grows into maturity. But the reason it resonated with me is because it said he's going to get the unteachable to embrace this wisdom. I know some of you are teachers out there. A lot of you are teachers out there. And you've had that student that was in your class and probably year after year you had a student each year, maybe several students each year that were unteachable. As a pastor, it's one of something I encounter a lot when people come in and say, I wanna know what God's will is and then it takes you about two and a half minutes to figure out, no they don't, they're unteachable. They didn't come here with ears to listen at all. What they really want God to do is bless what they've already decided to do. And they're just flat unteachable. No amount of obedience school is gonna fix this problem. I don't know that, that this message would have any good news for us if we just take it from the fact that unless people are taught all of the laws given by Moses at Mount Horeb, they're not making it into heaven. But when I really prayed about this message, I realized, oh, there is a lot of good news in this message because it's actually not learning it. It's this one coming in the spirit of Elijah. And what is this spirit? It's something that isn't intellectually grasped. It's spiritually grasped. And it will take this person who's unteachable and change their spirit. 
And all of a sudden, they will gain this wisdom, the, the wisdom of knowing how you obtain righteousness with God through the one who's coming after this prophet, Jesus. And so God is the one doing all the work. He's not, we're not having to sit in obedience school. He is sending, he is providing, he is making a way, a transformative thing. And that's why all of the gospels begin with the birth of John the Baptist. Because unless this spirit comes upon God's people, and remember that was the final part of this promise in Malachi, he will return many of Israel back to their God because they've wandered away. And that's why he's going to turn off the phone for 400 years. They're so far away. The very spirit in them is trusting in anything but their God. Then there's going to be this one who comes in the spirit of Elijah. And he's going to make unteachable people, disobedient people. And they're going to be brought back into righteousness with God. And so he, as God always does, he does all the heavy lifting. All we have to do is believe. Let us pray. Thank you, Lord, that you fulfilled the law. That you sent John the Baptist to reestablish communication with your people. And you still speak through that spirit to us. Say, the one who comes after me will be greater than me because he was before me. Lord, let us submit ourselves and let all of our soul be teachable and receptive to all that Christ has to say to us. We ask this in his mighty name. Amen.